Hello, so this is the lecture uh, which I was supposed to give yesterday, Tuesday, yes. Uh, so I'm now recording this video. <coughs> In first half an hour or some, I'll talk about renal clearance and then I'll go discuss or teach you a part of the protein binding and uh, and after that i will try to post so i will try to post uh, video on renal assignment okay so now let's first go over the learning objectives. <clears throat> In these lectures, we will learn the mechanism of renal excretion. We'll discuss about the mechanism of renal excretion and then what are the factors that influence the pathophysiological factor that influence drug excretion. And we'll also learn the rules of renal excretion also pronunciation in drug accumulation one important concept about glomerular filtration rate and the factors that affect glomerular filtration rate there are some markers which are used to measure GFR so we'll learn about that we'll also learn what are the factors that affect active secretion and tubular secretion influence of pH on renal elimination and some other calculations. We'll learn how one of one or two calculations would be the Bayesian calculation to determine the mechanism of excretion and we'll learn how to calculate uh, dosing rates in case of renal dysfunction patient and renal excretion from creatine clearance. <clears throat> Let's now go over the mechanism. First, uh, as I have mentioned, one in renal clearance lecture, I have mentioned that two major route of elimination is kidney and liver. So we are done with the liver part. Now we are talking about kidney. So some drugs are entirely eliminated by renal excretions. This one of them is amic acid. So yes, but do not have to. You do not have to memorize the names of these drugs. Some are eliminated completely by hepatic metabolism, such as warfarin. And I have discussed this thing. Some drugs are completely eliminated by by the kidney some are completely eliminated by the liver and renal excretion plays a major role in the elimination of many drugs because my liver receive uh, like the liver kidney receives about 20 to 25 percent of the cardiac output which is about one point Two liter, it's 1.5 liter uh, per minute. Liter per minute was for was lead liver blood supply. If you remember, liver blood flow. 1.2 liter per minute is kidney blood flow. So kidney excretes drugs and also other body wise. And in my previous video, I have discussed there are three mechanisms. One is glomerular filtration, as the name suggests. It is a filtration-based mechanism. Secretion, active tubular secretion, and tubular reabsorption. I in animation video I have showed you that there. Are 
this is glomerular filtration most of the drugs are filtrated a large number of drugs are filtrated by glomerular filtration and tubular reabsorption that drugs returns from this tubule renal tubule to the circulation so that means as tubular reabsorption means <coughs> As you can imagine, the drugs are entering this way and then gets out. So what is going to happen? When there is a tubular reabsorption involved, if you think about total, total drug excreted, we will have GFR plus tubular secretion minus reabsorption so <coughs> this equation suggests tubular reabsorption will increase if you are for example if you want to determine that there is tubular reabsorption or secretion only if you have data of GFR so that means you have only data for GFR if tubular secretion increases that means it will add tubular secretion tubular secretion that will add that means GA it is going to be higher than GFR and if you see you have again tubular GFR and then if reabsorption occurs that means it will go down it is going to be less than GFR and I will explain to you later so for the time being you remember <coughs> this major mechanism the mechanism filtration reabsorption secretion by reabsorption the drug moves from the tubule to the circulation secretion drugs moves from the circulation to the tubule and filtration is always drugs is filtered from the general circulation to enter to the tubule this concept you have to remember again tubular secretion will increase drug concentration in the tubule tubular reabsorption will decrease glomerular filtration will filter that means also will increase drug excretion and you have to remember this G F R plus T S tubular secretion and then minus tubular reabsorption this will give you total drug excreted <coughs> so approximately we know that approximately 10 percent of the blood flow 10 plus 10 of the cardiac output which is 120 milliliter per minute is the is uh, 120 milliliter of blood is filtered through the glomerular per minute so it is 120 milliliter per minute of blood is filtered at the glomerulus level and then all filtered plasma carries small molecules usually less than 2000 Dalton into the urine and only free form of small molecules are filtered at this level. Plasma protein, large molecules cannot be filtered. So this is one of the concepts you perhaps already know. Large protein, plasma proteins cannot be filtered. And the filtration is a first order process and unidirectional. Unidirection. That means filtration, what is happening here, it is unidirectional and first order process and rate of fil filtration of plasma water glomerulars is 120 milliliter per minute and this is called glomerular filtration rate GFR rate of filtration of plasma water rate of filtration of plasma water at glomerular is called glomerular filtration rate 
and it is usually 120 milliliter per minute. Renal clearance, renal clearance of the drug, you can calculate by using this equation. This is, if you see LR, it is total clearance. This is total clearance. Total renal clearance. But here, total renal clearance, that means CLR would be what? GFR plus secretion minus reabsorption. This is total clearance. But now, this is only for filtration. And here is the equation for only for filtration. This the this equation. You have to remember this equation here. This is CLR <coughs> by filtration only. CLR by filtration only. We can calculate by using this equation. Fraction FU. You know FU is the free drug fraction of free drug which is FU this is this is fraction CLR and then uh, if the GFR you multiply with the fraction of free drug for example here the blood has if a drug the blood has 10% free drug so and GFR CLR of S only through the no plasma protein is F is equal to 1. So when F is equal to 1, that means no plasma protein binding. This CLR by filtration is equal to GFR, which is 120 milliliter per minute. Okay. So <coughs> assume we are taking a drug that drug does not bind at all with the plasma protein. So that means we have fraction absorbed unbound. Fe would be the CLR by filtration is equal to we know Fe times GFR. And the drug does not bind at all with the plasma protein that means F is equal to 1 and we know that GFR is 120 milliliter per minute in that case your CLR by filtration is going to be 120 milliliter per minute but what is going to happen if my drug really binds 10 90% only 10% of the drug is free drug so in that case your FU FU is equal to 0 0.1 and then your CLR by filtration is going to be 0 0.1 times 120 that means 12 milliliter per minute so as you can see that fraction unbound or fraction free drug has a major influence on total clearance, renal clearance and especially in case of filtration. In case of filtration, free drug plays a major role. If there is no free drug, to summarize this again. No free, sorry, no protein binding. That means CLR by filtration is going to be 
F U times G F R. F U no protein binding that means F U is equal to one times G F R is equal to one hundred twenty milliliter per minute. So your filtration excretion by filtration is going to be one hundred twenty milliliter per minute. But if you F U becomes point one. You multiply it 120, your GFR, sorry, uh, your clearance by filtration is going to be 12 milliliter per minute. That, you see, there is a big difference based on the fraction bump. <coughs> so, now how we can measure GFR? <coughs> this is, we know the physiological value in normal circumstances, GFR should be 120 milliliter per minute. We know this, but in case of in case of patient, disease patient, healthy patient, young patient, how do you know? How can you measure GFR? So there are some markers called. One of them is called e creatinine, another is inulin. These compounds are eliminated only through filtration. That means whatever you administer and they are going to be eliminated by filtration. There is no secretion or reabsorption involved. And this drug, this compound, creatinine and inulin, does not bind with plasma proteins. So that means they are, oh, and there is no plasma protein binding. If you go by this, if you remember equation, CLR by filtration is equal to FU times FU times GFR. So in case of inulin and creatinine, FU is 1 and GFR is 120. So it's going to be 120 milliliter per minute. So under normal circumstances, because it does not bind it at all, so for this reason, these are used as marker for GFR. So if you change any difference in the creatinine, clearance, that something is going wrong. So inulin is an exogenous compound. is given to patients to measure GFR. Creatinine is an endogenous compound of muscle metabolism. And it is not administered to the patient. And Creatinine is produced from the muscle mass at a constant level and there is a steady state concentration in the plasma. So in this class, we will be only talking about creatinine. We are not going to discuss about inulin. That means for this class, our marker is creatinine. Now here we go. So as I mentioned, these, these are markers. Marker means you administer or you can measure this level of creatinine in the urine and you can come up with an idea about creatinine clearance. This is our notation is called C CLCR is our creatinine clearance. <coughs> If creatinine clearance is equal to the Renard clearance, total Renard clearance, we have this equation to calculate. Urinary excretion rate, urinary excretion rate by CSS. CSS is a steady state concentration of creatinine. Here, uh, how you calculate that creatinine clearance? You see, in this example, we have 24 hour volume in a patient urine volume is 1500 milliliter the concentration of creatinine in the urine and serum is see in the urine is 1.38 and serum which is CSS is 1.2 milligram percent respectively so you are asked to calculate CCLCR that means you have to calculate you have to use this equation you have to use this equation to calculate this. You have to calculate this one. To calculate this 
C creatinine clearance total amount of creatinine excreted you have to calculate here you see the urinary excretion rate we have to calculate the urinary excretion rate. how you calculate urinary excretion rate first we know that based on this information total urine volume was this and in this urine we have 1.38 milligram per milliliter creatine okay and then serum level was 1.2 percent so what we do we calculate the total amount of creatine excretion you see here it was 1.38 and the multiply with 1500 milliliter this would be the total creatinine excreted total creatinine present in in your 1500 you know, 1500 milliliter urine again how we have calculated we know that creatinine level was 1.38 so this is total so uh, how, how once you have the total so you have to calculate rate because equation has rate you calculate rate this is your total amount this is your total amount and then you divide by the 24 hour because urine sample was collected for 24 hour this is going to give you urinary excretion rate so here it is 86 0.25 milligram per hour or 1.44 milligram per minute <coughs> so you know in this equation and css is as you can see this is this answer is in milligram per minute we have but here it is a different way is 1.2 milligram percent so this needs to be calculated uh, converted to milligram per milliliter so unit concentration you have to go milligram percent that means milligram per 100 milliliter so you have to convert by dividing with 100 that means 1.2 milligram divided by 100 it will give you this value. so which is milligram per milliliter this conversion is necessary because our data is in 1.2 milligram per cent. 1.2 milligram per cent. That means we have 1.2 milligram in 100 milliliter. So then, if you want to convert to milligram per cent, milligram per milliliter is 1.2 divided by 100, and this is going to give you. 0.0128 milligram per milliliter this conversion you will always need so just remember this thing again i know you are having all the fun and i am working hard for you but it was a good idea that we cancel the class that you can have some relaxed time with the family here 1.2 milligram percent this is very simple thing but you may get confused because i know that i get confused with this stuff with this simple stuff so one milligram percent means one milligram per hundred milliliter so you have to convert it to milligram per liter which is going to be 0 0.12 milligram per milliliter and then here <coughs> so here is your rate milligram per minute and here your css which is this one so again we have done this calculation urine excretion rate we have calculated and then we have converted this if this is your creatine clearance this is your creatine clearance that means 100 to 20 milliliter per minute. this how you calculate creatinine clearance as you can see this creatinine clearance is same as renal clearance is not by filtration now so this is what we can calculate if you have urine data you have collected urine but as you can imagine collection of urine for 24 hours is a lot of work and this time is method is time consuming inconvenient 
because the requirement of complete collection of urine and also you, as you can understand we human cannot urinate whenever we want or perhaps you can but it's kind of weird that you, know, you have to collect urine all 24 hours so easy way you collect blood so we can calculate creatinine clearance from the plasma data and we can we also know css steady state constant of creatinine is directly proportional to production of muscle mass and inversely related to its clearance we, we know all this information so if you know all this information we have two approaches to calculate creatinine clearance one is equation one is this nomogram these are some equations so ladies and gentlemen you will have this equation the equation is no worries and I, I believe in DDS1 perhaps you have used this equation in males creatine clearance is milliliter per minute 140 minus age in year and weight in kilo and divided by 72 CSS this is the equation and here for female you see this there is not much difference female and male one difference is here it is 7 divided by 72 it is divided by 85 so here is the difference between male and female and if you have to calculate this is very easy this estimate the creatine clearance in 70 kilo 75 year old male with a serum creatine of 1.2 just put this 1.2 and 120 in age i think 70 age has to be is 75 yeah. and then you calculate this thing same is old male 70 kilo 20 year old male and it has same creatine clearance and you see it has 97 you see based on this age this gentleman was 75 and he is 20 year old there is a high creatine clearance in 20 year old so that means age has some influence in creatine clearance age has some influence on creatine clearance now these are the equation we will use you will have this equation if you know this equation you just plug it now a gender body weight in estimation of creatine clearance so as you have seen that based on the age when you change age there is although white is same creatine clearance same age makes a big difference serum creatine concentration of the of creatine urine in all patients do not mean that similar serum creatine creatine clearance similar renal creatine clearance so <coughs> as you have seen this in this case CSS is the same but based on the age creatine clearance is going to be females and smaller subjects also produce less creatinine creatinine than males and larger subjects so be, because this production of creatine clearance is proportional to the muscle mass I, I have mentioned this thing which is proportional to muscle mass so there is one correction has been incorporated it's called ideal body weight how we calculate ideal body weight this is how we calculate ideal body weight males kilo 50 times 2.3 times height in inches over 5 feet when over it has to be over 5 feet height why if somebody has 5 6 that means you have to multiply with 6 height in inches over 5 feet. same thing like one of the god I can have is Lindsay in the class she is perhaps six feet so height in inches in her case we have to have in this four five point plus 23 times five inches is that means in her case it's 12 inches so this is how you do but if the total body weight Lindsay I'm sorry but I thought it was a good example to be here. 
here in case of total body weight is less than estimated ideal then use when i p w is less than that estimately less than what you got from here then you use the use the total body weight actual body weight for example uh, using this calculation i p w you found body weight of someone like 80 kilo but his real body weight real body weight is 70 kilo so in this case you use 70 kilo does it make sense so in this case you use 70 kilo so that's what it mentioned this total body weight is less than the estimated ideal body weight use total weight so now one question one person's calculated 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 IBW is 80 kilo that person real body weight real body weight is 70 kilo which one which body weight you are going to use in calculating creating clearance of this individual yeah, for example in this equation the body weight which body weight are you going to use 80 or you are going to use 70 there's a question you try to answer it will be in your quiz on the next video now nomogram to estimate creatine levels these are graphical representation one of the no, this is one of them there may be more no, many many no, nomograms and also i was telling you during the class or previous video that now we have computer program and all of other stuff so you can calculate but first what you have to do use a ruler to draw a line connect the patient's weight to the patient's age patient's weight think about my weight is like 60 something is me okay let's me i am 70 i'm not 70 so <clears throat> and then okay i'm not tell what what is my age but let's see i'm 65 Okay, now what do you do? I'm not 65, you know that, huh? Here, you draw a line. So you have, you have to, of course, you have to have a ruler. And then draw another line that this is our line. There, okay, another line. Get in clearance like this. So this would be my. Sorry. This would be. This would be my creatine clearance. This is how so use your draw a line connecting the patient's weight to the patient's age and the second line connect the point R that first line meets and the patient serum creatine clearance extrapolate to the line clearance. So you just do this and then extrapolate this will give you creatine clearance of the patient. So this is an estimation using nomogram. So we have two method one use this equation another use this number so to summarize as of now what we have learned so far creatinine is the marker of gfr and to calculate creatinine clearance we have to use this equation urinary excretion rate by CSS. This CSS is the steady state concentration of creatine in the blood. And then if urinal method, method you using uh, creatinine from the urine is complex, time consuming, we can use serum level of creatinine. <coughs> Again creatinine clearance CCSLR 
we have two option urine and plasma this is time consuming complex plasma is easy then in case of plasma we have two method one is we can do use those equation or you can use those nomograph in case of plasma we need we measure creatine in the plasma in case of urine we measure creatine in in you now switch gear here as you also know in this case that creatine clearance is influenced by the age age affects creatine so that's why you have to make some adjustment in the a with the weight because creatine in production in our body depends is proportion to the muscle mass so if somebody is b so he will have different types of creatine clearance for this reason we have to do this adjustment now tubular secretion there is nothing new here some drugs are secreted into the tubular lumen of the proximal tubule through an active carrier mediated process you can know that you, you can understand it cannot be a passive process it's a carrier mediated process and two separate carrier systems are involved for the transport of acidic and basic drug drug so for transport of acidic basic drug we have two carrier systems so drug drug interaction occur when drugs of similar structure compete with each other for the same transport system so that means one acidic drug is competing with another acidic drug, one basic drug is competing with another basic drug. Example of such interactions are like inhibition of secretion of penicillin by provenicin, both acidic drug. Inhibition of secretion of procanamide by semitity. So these interactions reduce clearance, reduce clearance and increase plasma concentration of penicillin and procanamide. So as we have mentioned, if CLR of the drug is larger than its filtration clearance, always you have to remember, this is CLR, which is what? Total, total, And when you say CLR and it is it is filtration only, it is CLR by filtration only. That means we have only this this CLR is a total, and CLR by filtration it is renal excretion only due to filtration. This concept you have to remember always. This is CLR, CLR by filtration, that means clearance, excretion due to filtration and CLR is total clearance. That means total clearance would be CLR fill, which is for filtration, plus CLR secretion minus CLR reabsorption. This concept you have to remember to understand the subsequent concepts here. Tubular secretion occurs when this total real appearance is greater than this. This is what? This is, as anybody know, this is CLR by filtration. So that means tubular secretion will occur when there is extra drug. You think about this, our renal tubule. This is uh, where filtration is happening. Okay, this is where filtration is happening. So we have, and then some drug is coming, are secreting into this tubule. So as a result, this one fu times gfr gfr is going to be 
less than CLR or CLR oh, sorry less than less than CLR or CLR is going to be greater than this one this is what it says that CLR I will ask this question again when tubular secretion is going to occur tubular secretion is going to occur when total clearance is greater than the clearance by filtration here is an example CLR of a drug is 15 CLR of a drug is 59 milliliter per minute and creatinine clearance our creatinine clearance CCLR is 100 milliliter per minute and then free fraction is 0.2 so what do we know here our creatinine clearance is this CCLR so we can creatine clearance gives creatine clearance gives a measurement of GFR. No? So here, if we calculate my clearance by filtration, you have fraction-free unbound drug and GFR. What is the free fraction of the drug? Is this? and GFR is 100. So CLR by filtration is going to be 20 milliliter. Let's do this calculation here. What we are trying to find from this data, let's read this again. Here. We have a CLR, CLR is 59 milliliter per minute. This is our total clearance. And now this, it is saying that we have CLCR, that means creatine clearance. Creatine clearance CLCR is equal to 100 milliliter per minute. CLCR is nothing but, this is GFR. And here we have blood free drug in the blood is 0.2 that means Fu is equal to 0.2 so if we want to calculate we know the total clearance is this we are, we are going to calculate clearance by filtration we know that clearance by filtration is CLR fill is equal to Fu times GFR we know Fu is 0.2 GFR is creatine clearance is 100 milliliter 100 so that means filtration is point 20 milliliter per minute which one is greater this one you see we have now CLR total clearance is 59 milliliter per minute but CLR filtration is 20 milliliter per minute. 20 milliliter per minute. So you see total clearance is greater than clearance by filtration. That means CLR is greater than CLR F filtration. So that, that means we have here secretion active suppression must have contributed to this filtration because clearance by filtration is much less than the total clearance or total clearance is greater than by clearance by filtration for this reason we come to the conclusion that active secretion is involved in this case Now to tubular reabsorption. Tubular reabsorption. I will come back to this uh, in a few minutes because I have one thing already. Forty-four minutes. It's a seventy-five minute lecture. Let's see. I'll save this video and post the remaining in few minutes.